Hello and welcome to another episode on the channel. I'm Omnus and today we will react to the 100 best albums of the of the uh, 2000s. I'm not a big fan of the 2000s. I think that music pretty much peaked in the 90s. I really love the 90s uh, list for the majority. Uh, and even the picks I didn't like, I kind of like in a way. They're kind of a good splash to me. So, um, yeah, the 2000s was a big decline in quality, I would say. You know, post grunge and new metal and stuff like that came in, and uh, generic pop acts like Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears and all that. Uh, rap, I suppose, Eminem, you know, I did like Eminem, but I'm kind of iffy on him, honestly. Um, yeah, so there we go. The cover is back with. I have no idea what it's all it's called, but you know, where he has uh, kind of gay glossing eyes or something. Where the Chili Peppers was taking my game, that is like the, the centerpiece, so that must be a huge album. It was a pretty big album, but I was not particular, particularly. I was not per partic particularly a fan of that album. Um, yeah, <laughs> let's keep it at that. Nora Jones, or another chick, but she looks pretty banging. Well, she, she looks alright. Uh, you know, like, I can never get a chick like that fucking on. My, my standards are so fucking crazy, I will be single forever. But that's uh, another topic for another day. Um, like, one of the fucking Kanye West albums where he's wearing a beer suit for some reason. Uh, Green as American Idiot, probably my favorite Green album. Yeah, pretty much. It's, it's front to back, it's a great album, so there we go. Uh, Black Queen. Black Queen. Uh, Black Keys with Attack and Release, I didn't mean to say that, but it just came out like, it's, like it is meant to be. I'm not, I'm not mocking the Black Keys, I'm not a bit, really big fan of them, but I do like them, you know, they, they kind of keep the rock spirit alive, I suppose. Arcade Fire's Funeral is the cover, I, I love it all. Uh, the Suburbs, but that's 2010s. Neon Bible, put it on there, that's a great album. The, even the EP, yeah, that counts. And like I mentioned in the 90s, um, the Blueprint by Jay-Z, which is, which is, I believe, his bi his biggest acclaimed album or something, so there we go. Uh, so if you don't know the rules, or if you don't know my thing for the series, if I love something, I'm going to talk about it. If I hate something, I'm going to talk about it. If I'm in the middle about an artist, I just, you know, mention the name, mention the number and move on. Because uh, the nines list, I had to rush because I have no time anymore. So there we go. That's uh, how, I, how I look at this, so, so yeah, let's go. Number 100, or that's how I do it, so there we go. And number 100 is 10 new songs by Leonard Cohen, arguably one of the best titled albums ever, you know, just straight to the point. And then we have a record which looks very similar to Achtung Baby, in my opinion, cover art wise. Almost Kill Me by the whole Steady 99, never heard of them, but the cover looks really similar to that record, to that album art. Uh, number 98, Return to Cookie Mountain by TV on the radio. Number nine, that's, that's a funny title. Number 97 is Sky Blue Sky by Wilco. Uh, yeah, probably Fox Turtles is gonna be on there, like really high, so really acclaimed arms, there we go. Uh, number 96 is Original Pirate by Material. Or, original Pirate Material by The Street, there we go. It's a bit late. 95 is Songs, songs in a Minor. Songs in A Minor by Alicia Keys, that's kind of a dumb title. But Rolling Stone spells it like a small A, so they don't uh, em em emphasize on the A. So it looks it looks like uh, the title songs in a minor, which sounds really wrong. But Alicia Keys mean, means A minor, and I've no idea about I be I've no idea about minor shit. So there we go. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> don't keep me busy with kids. Fuck no. Uh, yeah, I, I cannot speak, my jokes are terrible, you, you don't have to say it. Uh, 94 is up the bracket by the Libertine, definitely a band I want to check out because they're highly acclaimed, they sound good, they are kind of a punky alternative band, so definitely request them if you want to. Um, oh, I fixed my table, nice. My, uh, my table is shaking, no, it isn't anymore, nice. Um, number 93 is in. Unearthed by Johnny Cash, Unearthed, I have no idea how you say that. Johnny Cash, is, Johnny Cash has so many albums, I mean, come on now. Num number 92 is uh, Forever and Forever I Go by Bon Iver. Number 91 is Veni Vidi Vicious by The Hives. Number 90 is Dimanchi A Bamako by Amadou and Miriam. 
89 is Hilton's T by radio. I think it is a great album, but I think that, uh, you know, not, not everyone with radio, it's a uh, spectrum. Uh, definitely, yeah, Kid Ash pretty much gonna top this list. I mean, come on now. In Ray, much is a personal favorite of mine. Amnesiac, it is kind of overrated, but uh, I, I would love to see it on the list. So there we go. Those are some uh, picks. 88 is Smile with Brian Wilson. I have no idea what, what the fuck this record is. Like, it was supposed to be released after Pet Sounds, or it was recorded with Pet Sounds in 1966. It wasn't released until 2011 i believe but it was it is on the 2000 list now it was released in 2000 like what the fuck is this album made the fuck is this i have no idea what the what the meaning is supposed what the meaning behind this record is like it's an unreleased masterpiece or something but it's not as good as pet sounds of course like what the fuck is this and why is it labeled under brian wilson I have no idea what, what the whole Beach Boy bullshit is. I, I, I just think they're one of the most overrated bands ever, personally. Number 87 is St. Elsewhere by Gnarls, Gnarls Barkley, however you say his name. And you know him, of course, from the hits on Crazy, and I believe uh, he later made a song, Fuck You, you know, on, on a different name, CeeLo Green. Definitely two great songs, I do love those songs. There we go. 86 says Give Up by the Postal Service. Number 85 is Viva La Vida by Coldplay. Uh, interesting album. I did not expect Coldplay to make the, you know, the rankings because they are a very controversial band. They are a very hated band, but I do like them. They're kind of like a U2 mimic band, but I do still like them. Yeah, Russia Blood to Death is probably going to make it. And if it isn't, then, you know, we're going to sort of fucking dumb. Uh, yeah, but I do like the band, um, yeah, um, I do think they deserve to be on the list. Um, yeah, I am kind of pleased that Fever de Vida is on the list because it is a great album, I think, so there we go. Number 84 is the Eminem Show by Eminem. Good album, pretty much his last uh, good album in my opinion, you know, he released Shady LP, which was probably my favorite. Uh, Martian Matters LP, which is kind of overrated. I think we should probably gonna top this list because, of course, it does. Um, yeah, and I think the Eminem show is good, but it's not as good as those uh, those those two records. You know, not his first two because Encore was his first. Encore, and I think after that he's never really made a great record again. So there we go. Uh, Eighty three is the Black Queen. Que Queen's the Black Keys attack and release. I don't know why, why I keep saying that, but they definitely want to attack and release their anger on me after saying saying it like that. I, I think that the cover also looks fucking abysmal. Like that. What does that cover supposed to mean? It's, it just aggravates me. Probably a good death, but I don't really care for the for the keys. Number 82 is Rated R by Queen of the Stone Age. Great record. I hope that song for the devil making because that's pretty much their you know their their golden ticket. Or something. Uh, number 81 is Ryan Adams with gold. Uh, yeah, definitely a great artist. You know, I believe he covered um, 1989 with Taylor Swift. I really love that. So I love the record. So there we go. Uh, maybe Taylor Swift is going to be on the uh, all. <sighs> I can't speak anymore. Um, maybe Taylor Swift is also going to make this list because she was pretty much like a huge pop star back then. Still, you know, she still is to this day, of course. Number 80 is uh, Youth and Young Manhood by Kings of Leon. I, I think this is a terrible band. Always hated them, they're just bad, in my opinion. So there we go. 79 is Electric Version by the New Pornographers. Interesting name to say at least. Number 78 is Illinois by Sufjan Stevens. Uh, I believe he's an electronic artist, definitely one of the best. Yeah, a great artist. So there we go. Number 77 is And Then Nothing Turned Itself Inside Out by Yo La Tengo. Number 76 is Two Bracket by Sigur Rose. I have no idea what that means. You know, the form, I suppose, like an onion. I have no clue where that's, uh, where that's title. Uh, number 75, Neon Bible, Arcade Fire. I love the cover of this. I love the, you know, you have Intervention on there. This is a great song. I've yet to listen to this a bit more, but it is definitely a, uh, a very great record. You know, Neon, Bi Neon Bible is probably one of my favorite named albums. And Arcade Fire might be one of my favorite named bands. My, yeah, the, one of the best named bands, you know, together with Pumpkins, Nine Inch Nails, Pulp, in my opinion. So there we go, great band names. 
Nummer 74 is Stadium Arcadium by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Ja, uh, yeah, de cover art is een good al, maar dat is een bit too long en too overbloated voor me. 73 is Paris. Parachute by Coldplay, good album. Um, yeah, I do really like this actually. Yellow is on air. It's a very mellow, it's a very relaxing kind of like the band's era radio ad, which I'm just ripping off from Rolling Stone right now. Like Coldplay ripped off radio ad, but you know, a rip off of radio ad doesn't sound that bad, right? But, or but. And well, if you, if you listen to it, it yeah, you know, it's actually de pretty decent, so there we go. It's actually a pretty good record. I, I did review it, so definitely check out my review for it. I think it is a great record, so there we go. Number 72 is The Woods by Sleer Kinney. Number 71 is Friends Werder and Self Titled. Number 70 is Under Construction by Missy Elliott. Number 69 is Lifted or The Story is in the Soil. Soil. Keep Your Ear to the Ground by Bright Eyes. It's a long ass title. 68 is How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb by U2. And of course, they're gonna throw. Um, all the Scandi Beyond, which I think is a great record. It is really overrated, but it is a great record. Uh, but I don't think it's like one of the greatest albums ever. Like uh, Watch Mojo, yeah, Watch Mojo is a Rolling Stone is a too. So I mixed them up a lot. Uh, Rolling Stone, they think it's one of the greatest albums ever. I think it is a great record, but not one of the 500 best albums ever. Fuck off, Rolling Stone. Number 67 is Vesper Team by Bjork. And this is actually uh, Melon's favorite album by Bjork. I've yet to check it out. I believe she's. Just chilling with her, how do you say that? I'm really bad at English, you know, like you can hear. Uh, I have no idea, but she is, you know, her ar armpit, her armpit is revealed. And she has some titties out, so there we go, so you gotta love it. But she's like 40 years old, so it's kind of a uh, double S short right there. Yeah, if you're into middle. All jokes aside, Bjork is a great artist and this is this is her most acclaimed album. Vespertin sounds like a great title. Cover is, uh, you know, you can get down to it if you know what I mean. So definitely check it out. Uh, definitely request it to me because I'm interested to review some Bjork. She's a great artist. There we go. Number 66 is I'm a Bird Now by Anthony and the Johnsons. Number 65 is Proxima Estation Esperanza by Manu Ciao, it's a dumbass title, but there we go. Uh, number 64 is Time to Time the Re Revelator by Gillian Welch. Oh, looks not kind of bang. Really. Number 63 is 808s and Heartbreak by Kanye West. I believe this was one of his, um, you know, what's the thing, one of his most polar polarizing kind of releases. Um, yeah, he went more into a poppy direction, I believe. Other tuners on there as well, you know, Jesus Walks and shit like that. Um, I have kind of a soft spot for Kanye, he has good albums, but I do not, you know, love him or something, but I do like his craft, his artistic vision, so there we go. Number 62 is America 3, Solitary Man by Johnny Cash, uh, this was released in 2000, so not, uh, the Hurt cover isn't on there yet, but it is a great album. Oh wait, and I believe that, you know, when I look back in the 80s, because I saw the shit and I thought, oh, the Smiths, but they don't have a record in the, in the 2000, but... And then I actually thought about that the Smiths were actually not with the Queen and Death on um, on the 80s list, which was kind of surprising, only the self-titled made it, I believe. Which is really fucking weird, if you think about it, because that's easily their best record, I mean, come on. Number 61 is Owen oh, Verde World by The Shins. Number 60 is Wolfgang, Wolfgang Amadeus by Phoenix, Wolfgang Amadeus Fear by Phoenix. Number 59 is Turn on the Bright Light by Interpol. Number 58 is The Grey Owl by Ginger, Ginger, Danger Mouse. There we go. And I have no idea why the, like a sort of reflection of the Beatles is behind him. Like, what the fuck? And Jay-Z is mentioned with the Black Owl. Like, what is this? What is this call for? Why is the, why is the Beatles standing behind Jay-Z or Danger Mouse? Ooh. Or whoever it is. That's such a weird mashup. It's probably a remix album or something. Number 57 is uh, Transatlanticism, which is arguably one of my least favorite album titles ever to, to hear and to say. And to see. Just everything. Uh, a lot of the cover though, with the, with the cr crow, with the crow, you know, uh, being in a sort of red rope or something that looks adorable as well and pretty cool at the same time with the nice mellow be beige background it's a really nice cover i've yet to listen to it though that death cap for cutie definitely a band that i want to check out that i want to scope out a bit so if you want to request it then there you go 
Nummer 56, you know, speaking of mensen that want to scope out, Vampire Weekend self-titled, good album, but really had, had like a hot chick, or like one of their albums that uh, brought them in hot water. Speaking of hot shit, you know, that, that chick, she looked pretty hot, so there we go, so definitely check it out, because they do sound and they look like an interesting band. That, that model's pretty bang, so there we go. Uh, you know, that's how you get me interested, there, there you go. Well, not really, but uh, it is it is a plus one, I suppose, you know. Um, how do you say that? Presentation, I suppose. Uh, number 55 is Raising Sam by Robert Plant and Alison Krauss. Ha had no idea Robert Plant was still making music, but I'm glad for him that he, that he is and that he's still en enjoying himself. Have a big respect for Robert Plant, although I'm not the biggest fan of him singing, but uh, Led Zeppelin, of course, great band, and you know, he ceased to enjoy himself with a pre pre bang chick. Fucking up with a pretty banging chick, but it might be his daughter, so I might, you know, say something, uh, say something really bad there. It probably is his daughter. His daughter doesn't say it so. So, yeah. Robert Plant against Corson Hose, You know what I mean? But it is fucking Robert Plant. So come on now. Number fifty-four is "Come Away with Me" by Nora Jones. Uh, yeah, one of the cover really banging chick. Uh, for, uh, people are probably gonna call me sexist because I, you know, ranked the home on the cover or something. But I, you know, I haven't really listened to the record, so I cannot really rate it on anything else. So there we go. But it looks interesting, so definitely request it if you if you do like it. Fifty three only by the Nice Kings, really a terrible band. Next pick. Fifty two. Uh, Erin Urban, Mia, and I believe the Paper Plane song was on there. I do like that song, and she seems like an interesting artist, but she is kind of like a Rihanna or something where she does start off the or while Rihanna started out like dog shit and then later became a bit better and then, then became dog shit again. And Mia started out great, I think, but it's just gonna, she did decline ever since this record came out and is now kind of like a former shell of herself. So there we go. And uh, number 51 is Kill the Moonlight by Spoon. Uh, load more. I hate that they can only like load 50 picks and I have to <coughs> uh, load the other 50 again. That's you know it's gonna waste some time again. You can't say that I load it. <laughs> Kill me. Uh, number 50 is I'm wide awake. It's morning by Brothers. Number 49 is Extra Extraordinary Machine by Fiona Apple. Number 48 is Dear Sign by TV on the radio. And number 47 is Fleet Foxes, self titled. Number 46 is Future Sex Love Sound by Justin Timberlake, one of my favorite pop albums of the decade. Uh, was this the Team Pop Kid? Hey, fuck off. <laughs> you know, Justin Timberlake is good, but don't, don't compare it to, to a masterpiece corner. Uh, yeah, it's a good album. Sex, yeah, Sexy Back is on there. Think She Knows. Um, there's like one song I really love that is on this album. And uh, never talk about it. Da, 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 da. You know that that song with, with that, uh, which had a nine minute music video or something. Uh, I forgot the title. That's pretty much my favorite Justin Timberlake song right there. And it and it is a shame that he kind of went on a hiatus and never really made a record like this again. It is a shame because it is a great pop album. So you know, I hope that Justin Timberlake will review or review will once come back to his roots again on this record because this was a big improvement on his debut. Uh, his 2013 record was ve very mature, but it was a bit too overbloated and a bit too long. And I believe Man in the Woods is like a fucking atrocity. I mean, the man gave it like a two or something or a three. So yeah a big decline in quality for the guy which has to be a bit consistent and that you know justin timberlake is pretty much the exact opposite of the word consistent so there we go number 45 is graduation by Kanye West, good album but i don't think it deserves to be on there but of course it's Kanye West, so they're gonna throw it on there uh, number 44 is toxicity by system of a damn good album but I'm kind of surprised that it threw, threw it on there because it is sold for what it is but i don't think it's uh you know 100 all-time warrior for 2000 well maybe it is it is a good album but I, I wouldn't personally put it on there it is good but you know maybe not for me 43 you know speaking of albums that are not for me old foot by the killers uh, give me that killers album made you know killers by maiden <laughs> i'm still making the joke because the killers are a fucking joke number 42 is figure eight by elliot smith number 41 is arguably one of my well, I, don't, I don't hate the record but it's probably like my least favorite record 
of the of that year or something, whatever people say, I just want to know what art the movie. It is a good album. I do like it, but I don't think it's all time worthy, you know, it's, it's good, but yeah, maybe for this list, but not for the all time greatest records. That's what I think, you know, I think the cover, if you if you watch the video, then I think that's pretty funny too, so there we go. <coughs> oh my god, uh, 40, uh, I'm not saying oh my god because of Kanye West, but I'm oh, 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 almost puking, fucking hell. Number 40 is late, registra late Registration by Kanye West, I cannot speak anymore. Um, yeah, you know, Good Album is probably his best album, I would say. I have no idea what his obsession is with Teddy Bears, he probably likes his fuck the shit out of them, them or something. I have no idea, so Kanye West, you, you do you, I do like some Kanye West. Uh, you know, I think his best one is uh, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, which has some terrible features like uh, Nicki Minaj on there, I believe. Uh, well, some other artists were on there, you know, Bonnie Fair was on there, that was pretty good, so uh, Rihanna. You know, well, well I, do, I do like Rihanna when she's in good hands, like Coldplay and Kanye West, but and Paul McCartney, you know, 4 5 six. but when she's in bad hands, her own career, then, yeah, you know, she, she kind of sucks in a way, so there we go. So I'm really iffy on her. But if she is in the right hand, she can make great music, or she sings on great music, I have to say, because she doesn't write jack shit. Number 39 is Aha Shake Heartbreak by Kings of Leon. The fuck even is it? I didn't even know that this existed. Fuck that. Number 38 is Heartbreak by Ryan Edifinet. Oh, that is a really dumb like follow. Like, oh, Heartbreak album? Another Heartbreak album. Fuck off, Rolling Stone. Number 37, speaking of bullshit, Get Rich or Die Trying by 50 Cent. I fucking despise 50 Cent. He has like one good song and it just all went to shit after that. Terrible artist. Artist. You know, just enjoy your billion dollar mansion, you fucking uh, dumbass prick. Oh my god, 36, no line on the horizon by you two. This is not a good album. I've reviewed this album, I gave it like a 6 or something. It's okay. It's so fucking boring. It's so generic. It's so... Just middle of the road. This is such a boring ass album. I mean... No, just don't put this on there. This, man. Uh, number 35 is Stories from the City, Stories from the Sea by PJ Harvey, pretty banging on the cover. So she probably is a chick because she had rid of me or something, which she looked like a chick too. She looked like a chick too, so she probably is a chick or, you know, dude looked like a lady, whatever. It's probably the only Aerosmith reference I will ever make on this channel. <laughs> uh, you know, you know uh, keep them counting or something or whatever. Uh, keep counting them because that is the only one. Number thirty four. Number thirty four. Speaker box a lot below by Outcast. Good album. I do prefer their you know Stan Kanye, which is probably gonna top this list or something, or is gonna be in the top ten. I think it is a little bit too poppy for me, but I do like it. I do like it that the artists had like separate uh, you know albums. It was a double album, and they sang separate, separate, separately on it. No, I've only heard Andre's songs on it. So Andre, you know, is the hit maker of the hit dispensing machine of the of the band, of the duo. And the other guy, I forgot his name, but you know, you know, I do like him too. Which really smell like poo poo. What the fuck? Oh, that's I believe a lyric on there. What the fuck? Number thirty three is Discovery, but but definitely one of my all time favorite record. I, you know, I love this record. One more time, um, Aerodynamic, one of my favorite instrumentals, Digital Love, one of my other favorite songs, Too Long, great, great one, epic, epic techno song. Uh, something About Us, Romantic as Fuck, Verse Quote, great, uh, Short Circuit, just catchy as hell, just overall a banging album, Death, Death Pink's Discovery, one of my other favorite, pretty much my favorite techno album, and pretty much one of my other favorites albums ever honestly number 32 is the card through by lil wayne uh yeah i believe you know a one album fluke or something by an otherwise terrible artist and this record is acclaimed so uh do with that what you will i believe his first two cards are fucking terrible everything that came after this is, this is pretty bad so this, so this is pretty much is only like good album i've heard i'm not even sure about that so there we go you know, uh, my, my, my young money millionaire came from the dance or whatever. Uh, I don't even, uh, yeah, I'm even an idiot. I have no idea how the song was called, but I do like the song. 
And number 31 is Jacket G by, or My Morning Jacket by G, or G by My Morning Jacket. There, there we go. Really fucked up album cover with an owl, or with three baby owls dissecting the mother owl, owl in a sort of crowded city. That is her. That is her lung system, or however you want to call that. Number 30 is In Rainbows by Radio, one of my personal favorites of the 2000. Great record, a lot of classic songs on that album. Probably, yeah, pretty much one of the best radio albums ever, in my opinion. Number 29 is Agatha's Beer Yun by Sigur Rose. Number 28 is Fever to Tell by the Yeah Yeah Yes, probably one of my least favorite band names, but that's just me. Number 27 is Yoshimi Battles, The Pink Robot by The Flaming Lips. I believe they're their most acclaimed album, so there we go. If you do want to request it, then do that. Number 26, The Grave by Cat Power. What the fuck? I never heard of that. That's probably a bit garbage. Uh, 25 is Amnesiac by Radiohead. Yeah, great album. I do not think this uh, deserves to be above uh, in Rainbows because it's pretty much like a Kid A B-Sides album or you know a leftover album, which is still great. It still spawned a lot of great uh, you know, uh, sequel songs and Rolling Stone is describing this album as the greatest sequel since The Godfather Part 2. No, and I, I don't even think The Godfather Part 2 is that good. I, you know, I love the first Godfather, but I think the second one is just kind of overrated, in my opinion. And we all know how the third one went. Yeah, number 24 is Magic by Bruce Springsteen. Just Bruce Springsteen, please fuck off, man. Just on the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, let's just. Fucking, you know, not not uh, not you, you, not him himself, but the artist fucking died. Just his career, just died off already, which he did. So there we go. Number twenty three is a voodoo by D'Angelo. Just a cringy naked black dude, you know, want, wanting to seduce you. Oh, I fucking hate. It. Well, I don't hate rap, but I hate rap like that, like seducing, sleazy, cliche, sex rap music like that. I fucking hate that. R and B, I suppose, modern R and B. Twenty two is American Idiot by Green Day. Uh, one of my favorites of the of the two thousand. American Idiot came from it. Jesus of Siberia, pretty much the greatest Green Day song. Uh, Wake me up when, when September ends. The most personal song for Billy Joe Armstrong. Uh, Holiday. Anthem, of course. Uh, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, Epic Ballad, I suppose. You know, this record has everything what I like about Green Day and, and more. So, you know, you gotta love this record. Nova Game, which is a personal favorite. Just a great record overall. Number 21, A Rush of Blood to the Head by Coldplay. Pretty much the best Coldplay song for the album ever. Uh, you know, I was thinking about Clocks, which is pretty much the best Coldplay song. Yeah, I do really love this album. It is a great record, so uh, this is definitely up there as one of the greats. Uh, yeah, uh, Coldplay never really got to this level again, but I do love this album a lot. So there we go. Number 20 is Back to Black by Amy Winehouse. Uh, yeah, definitely her greatest achievement. She, of course, uh, OD'd after this album, but it is definitely a great one. Uh, number 19 is White Blood Cells by The White Stripes. Uh, yeah, you know, Fellow Love of a Girl was on there. Dirty Ground and the. Dirty Ground and The Dead Leaves, I believe, was on there, so there we go. Um, Hotel Yorba, a lot of classic songs on this album. I'm not a big fan of the Stripe, but this is like a big album for them. Not their biggest album, but we will get to that. Number 18, 18 is Oracular Spectacular by MGMT. Uh, yeah, you know, I want to get into the band too, so if you want to request a duo, electronic duo, if you do want to request it, then let me know, because I am interested in covering this band, because Alex loves them. Number 17 is Sea Change, but back, you know, where you had the, the faggy, well, I'm not gonna, <laughs> faggy is kind of an offensive, offensive word, but where you had the colorful, kind of gay looking eyes. Well, <laughs> like gay isn't any controversial, any less controversial. But it is a good album for whatever, so definitely uh, request it to me because I do like Beck, I'm just not the biggest fan of it. Uh, you know, I just gener generally like him, so there we go. Number 16 is Stankonia by Outkast. Uh, yeah, definitely their best album. From the, uh, I think their best album overall is probably Aquamini. But this is definitely a close second. It's probably like an entry level kind of album, but my money will go to Aquamini. I haven't time anymore, so I have to kind of wrap it up. The Rising of Bruce Springs, you fucked this album, uh, 15. And number 14, The Black Album by Jay Z. I do like this album, but uh, of course, I do prefer one album and one upcoming album, which is coming up, which coming, coming up, which you guys can all probably predict if you have followed the channel or have watched the 90s list for that matter and you know know what I'm on about. 
I do, I do not like the the fucking nose, like the nose hole, like that's fucking disgusting and the lips I guess, but that's me kind of being a fucking razor, but I do not like that aspect. Uh, yeah, so there we go. Uh, 13 is all that you can leave behind by you too. Great album, but I do not think it deserves to be 20 worthy, but it is a classic, it's a more classic in their discovery. And this album, you know, this is basically their Back in Black album after this. Um, they just kind of uh, decided to rest on the laurels to kind of re recreate it all over and over and over again. And it worked once more with How to Dismantle and it worked for ACDG too, you know, once more with, uh, with For Those About to Rock. But it was definitely not on that, the first time of quality, I would say. So it's kind of, you know, uh, you know similar to that, similar to that uh, thing. And they never really recovered from that, uh, from that thing. So we got. Number 12 is Sound of Silver by LCD Sound System, a good album, I've yet, yet to check it out. Number 11 is Love and Temple Bob Dylan, major credit Bob Dylan is still trying and working it out and that he's this high on the list, so major credit to him. Number 10 is The College Dropout by Kanye West, good album but I don't, don't think it's top 10 worthy. And of course the teddy bear suit again, like what the fuck does he have with teddy bears? Number 9 is Scala by Mia, I believe her follow-up album, which arguably is even better, or this is where Paper Planes was on, so there we go, that's what they're saying. Although I do think that her covers look really retarded, but, well, her, her herself look really bad. But her kind of albums have a kind of trippy kind of retro video game style to them, which I do like, but I do not like her looking retarded on the cover, that looks pretty bad. But I will probably like to so do requests if you want to. I have no time anymore, so I have to wrap this up. A modern time will be nice to see Moner again with a modern album, so definitely great. Number seven is the Marshall Matters LP by Eminem, not number one, so I'm happy for that, but still made a list, so there you go, Eminem fans. Number six is Funeral by Arc of Fire, great album, should have been number one. Number five is Elephant by the White Stripes, great album, yeah, definitely top ten worthy. Yeah, it's probably, yeah, probably a spur from number five. Number four is Jay-Z The Blueprint, yeah, great, great hip-hop album. Number three is Yankee Hotel Foxtrot by Wilco, I've yet to check it out, but I've heard great things about this one. Number two is The Strokes, is this it? Uh, yeah, definitely a great album, do love the, the reworked album cover with the blue and light, great one. Number one is Kid A by Brady Wet, yes it is, so that's pretty much my favorite too. So I agree with this part on Running Stone, part of the time anymore, see you guys in the next video.